Hey guys, my name is Lily and today I want to review the most used knife on Naked and Afraid, which is this large knife here that is still in the box. And this knife is by the company Top Knives, which is a very respectable brand in the knife world. And it also was designed by E.J. Snyder. Now I'm a big fan of E.J. Snyder. He had multiple TV appearances at various uh, survival reality shows on TV in the US and all around the world. So he has been six times on Naked and Afraid. He survived 200 days in the wilderness, naked with limited amounts of tools. Also, he has been on First Man Out and on Dual Survival. So this guy really knows what he's talking about. He has a ton of experience and I really look up to him. And today I have the opportunity to review his knife and actually he has designed two knives with the company Tops Knives uh, and today I want to show you both of these knives. So one is the smaller one, uh, the smaller tracker knife and the bigger one is the most used knife or tracker knife at Naked and Afraid. Okay, let's start with the smaller knife here. So this is the packaging of the knife. It comes in a sealed plastic bag, which is a very good idea. So the bag uh, protects the knife from uh, getting moist while transporting. And here you can see it's made in the USA. Okay, so this knife here comes with a very good kydex sheath. Also the belt loops are really interesting. I've never seen something like that. How can I open this? Like so, okay. So the snap buckles here on the belt loop, they are really like strong and sturdy. Uh, you won't open these up by accident for sure. Okay. Very interesting, yeah. And this is the knife. Wow, look at that. Okay, so I want to show you the knife a little bit more detailed. And as you can see, this knife is a tracker knife. So it has a little bit more of a broader blade at the front. So you have more weight at the front and this will aid you in chopping. So if you have just a classical knife design, it will also chop, but tracker knives chop better than the classical knife design. Yeah, and the steel here is 1095 carbon steel. Uh, it's very uh, popular in the US. Also here, you can see that the knife is called SXS by E.J. Snyder. And here you can see the brand, uh, the company Tops knives. And here at the other side, it says made in the USA. So all in all, I have to say my first impression is a really good one. Um, it looks like a really nice knife and it fits my hand very well. And also, uh, if you have bigger hands, there still is a lot of handle left. So if you uh, are a big guy with big hands, this still should be long enough so that your hand fits the handle. Um, let's take a look at the tip here. The tip looks very thick and sturdy, so uh, it won't rip off very easily. It also comes with a very sharp saw at the back side. Then it comes with um, extra holes here and here. Um, this is the finger coil, which is big enough so that you don't slip over onto the blade, which I like. So the handle is uh, line and Mikata and it comes with red liners, which looks really awesome. Yeah, and then this is the end or the pummel of the knife. It has been shaped into an emergency hammer with a flat part here. And also it comes with two holes and with all of those holes you can mount it onto a spear, which is nice. And also the blade is really thick. I believe it's thicker than five millimeters. At least it looks like that. So you're not going to break this knife easily. It's very sturdy and also it's full tang, of course. So I gotta say, I really like this small knife. It's an awesome blade and it looks really sturdy. You can also take the knife in reverse grip like that. You can even put on the finger onto the back uh, so 
the point here is sharp but not too sharp so you can still put your finger on top of that and use the knife like this so this way you are a little bit better at stabbing and digging into wood for example so i gotta say i really like how they uh, made the end of this knife it looks good okay so this was the first knife the smaller of the two and now i want to show you the bigger knife and later on we are going to do a chopping and patoning test okay now let's check out the bigger knife and this is the one that was on naked and afraid a couple of times wow look at this it's really big oh my god Woo! look at that oh my god this is a huge knife unbelievable okay so here you got a nylon sheath and it comes with a paracord attached to the bottom of the sheath so this is probably used to attach the sheath to your tie and then we have this small compartment here this is where you can put in a sharpening stone for example so what i like is that uh, you get these two uh, safety buckles and straps and they have buckles and also they have velcro so you're not going to lose the knife if it's inside of the sheath and if you are closing both of these uh, buckles here wow oh yeah the sheath is molly compatible too so you can attach it to your backpack and this is the knife oh my god this is huge this is huge Woo! oh my god i cannot believe it so i just want to give you a comparison of the two knives there's quite a difference in size unbelievable i can't believe how big the sxb knife is wow <laughs> oh my god it's so thick look at that oh my god it's so heavy and thick and big so this is a true knife for the apocalypse okay now let's take a closer look at the bigger knife here so here again you can see the knife uh, name which is called sxb again by ej snyder the skull crusher and here's again the logo and at the other side you can see that it's made in the us and again this knife is made from 1095 carbon steel uh, with about 57 plus minus one rockwell and i gotta say it's a really heavy and robust blade so um, i don't think you are able to break this blade i think this is going to last you for your entire life uh, i mean look at the thickness of this blade i don't think it's possible to destroy this knife it's unbelievable <laughs> And the smaller brother here um, actually it looks really similar but only much smaller yeah and here we again have these two holes um, they are for um, if you want to mount the knife onto a stick or spear again here at the end we have this emergency hammer that can both act as a glass breaker or you can take it to you know smash off limpets of a rock so i really like how sturdy the hammer is okay so now let's take a look at the handle uh, the scales are micata black micata scales and again you have the red liners i think that looks really awesome and if you take a look at the back of the blade you can see that this knife has a monstrous spine so i've never owned a knife that has uh, such a thick blade okay now let's take a look at the tip so this one looks really sturdy as well yeah i don't think you're going to rip this off easily okay so now i want to do a small uh, test of the knives i want to do some carving chopping batoning and maybe a little bit of knife destruction okay i'm going to start with the smaller knife let's see how it chops So it chops really good for such a small knife. 
Now let's see how it's doing with the carving. It carves really well. It also carves at the curved part here, which is nice. So you can make some fine feather sticks. Wow. I like it. Yeah, it chops really good for such a small knife. So normally uh, these smaller knives are not chopping that well because uh, they do not have the weight in front that they need. But yeah, I gotta say I like it. Okay, this is how the smaller knife chops and carves. Now let's try out the bigger knife. <laughs> this knife chops like an egg. Oh my god! <laughs> Whoa! My, this is the most uh, used survival knife on the show Naked and Afraid. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I gotta say, I've never had a knife that chops as well as this knife. And of course it's chopping much better than other knives because it's larger and it has a lot of weight here. So it's very similar um, to using a hatchet. Okay, now I want to try and carve some feather sticks with this thick blade. Let's see how it goes and let's see how sharp it is. Unbelievable. So even this thick blade is sharp enough that you can still make some fine feather sticks that now you can light with fire steel or use as tinder um, with your lighter or matches. So this is really, really good for such a thick blade. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that it carves this well. If I want to change the way I'm carving, I just um, change the angle of the knife then I put on the thumb onto this rail and then I can carve like this. So it's more a cutting motion and carving motion, not only like that, but also like that. And that's a pretty interesting grip, uh, which you can use for, you know, carving very fine feathers, for example, very fine shavings. See? This is what I'm talking about. It's super fine stuff. And that's what you can achieve by carving and slicing at the same time. Yeah, so, so far this knife has excelled at chopping and at carving, which I'm really surprised that it can do such fine feathers. Distraction.
beast. Okay, now I want to do some batoning with the smaller knife here. So right now I'm going through a branch and this is why it's taking longer. So, I've just completed the batoning part. Yeah, both knives have done a good job. Of course, it's easier to baton with a bigger knife because you can baton bigger logs. And I have to say that those two thumb ramps here, which are sticking out a little bit, they actually aid in batoning because when you have your knife inside of the log, you also want to every now and then um, baton the handle. and. Um, if you want to protect your handle, you can baton on this bump here rather than batoning directly on the handle scales and this is really good because then you can uh, protect your handle scales from any damage. So I stuck in the knife and then I batoned like this and then sometimes when the knife was like that um, I batoned on this small knob here and this way you can protect the handle scales and you don't have to be afraid of breaking them. Okay, so now I want to do a strip tenth strip <laughs> tip strength tip strength strip. Okay, so now I want to do a um, tip strength test. I'm going to start with the smaller knife. Uh, sometimes in a survival situation, it can happen that you need to search for bait for fishing, and sometimes you can find grubs inside of logs. So you would take your knife and um, yeah, try to pry the log and search for the grub. And for this task it's very important that you have a stable tip that doesn't break easily or bend too easily. Okay, so the tip is still here, it's not bent or anything, it's still straight and I've only used moderate pressure. So in a survival situation when you're doing this you probably won't need more pressure than just trying to bend it slightly like that. But later on we are going to do a more severe tip test and now I want to test um, the tip of the big SXB knife. Woo! I found a grab. It's small, but it's here. That's not a lot of protein, but it can be fish bait. So I believe now we have to do a little bit of a more severe tip test. Let's try again. So of course this test now is a destruction test, it has nothing to do with survival anymore because this is something that you wouldn't do in a survival situation. Yeah. So we got a really sturdy tip here, you're not going to bend or break it easily. straight as straight as before okay so I think that these two knives 
are really good knives. I think E.J. Snyder has done a good job in designing them and also Topps Knives have done a very good job in producing them. So I cannot really say anything bad about the knife. The steel is 1095 carbon steel, which means that it's going to rust uh, if you do not take care of it. So that's probably the only thing that you have to be careful about. But this is also the reason why the knives are coated with this special black coating. But still some of the uh, saw teeth, they are not coated. And of course the edge is also not coated. So you have to make sure that you keep the knife as dry as possible, keep it oiled. Also make sure that you don't get too much of uh, water inside of the sheath because if it's wet inside and you stick your knife in, the next day you are going to have rusty spots on your knife. So when it comes to carbon steels, um, most people know it, that you have to take care uh, of the knife and that you have to oil it and keep it dry, as dry as possible. Yeah, other than that, I have to say I really like the two knives. Now, which one of the two do I like better? I gotta say, it really depends on what you want. Uh, do you want a small knife that you can conceal carry, um, that you can quickly throw into your backpack and that is lightweight and um, yeah, not too big, then I think this is a good choice. If you want a knife that is truly made for the apocalypse, um, which chops like a hatchet, but which also cuts like a very fine knife. And if you don't mind the extra weight of the blade, then this is definitely my first choice. So let's say if I had $300 in my bank account that I do not need and I want to buy myself a nice Christmas present, I think I would go for the bigger blade because this is really a very unique blade. Um, which is truly a one item survival tool. So you won't need an axe anymore if you have this tracker knife. You won't need a saw anymore. So the SXB is definitely going to do all of the survival tasks that you would need to do in a survival situation. Now the cool thing is that EJ Snyder also has a YouTube channel and I will link his channel into the description of this video. So make sure that you check out his channel, also subscribe to his channel because he has a ton of knowledge that he's sharing on his YouTube channel. Now besides creating and designing knives and besides having his YouTube channel and being on all kinds of survival shows, E.J. Snyder now also has an online video course where you can learn some survival skills from him. And the thing about Naked and Afraid is that they often show cool stuff, but they do not go really into detail about how people make a trap or make a fire or make the bow drill set. And now E.J. Snyder has created this awesome online learning course where he goes into the details. And I gotta say that survival is more and more about the details and not so much about the bigger things that you are doing. So let's say for example, you're making a bow drill set, but there are 1000 mistakes that you can make when you are making the bow drill fire. So it's important that you know how thick the spindle is, that you know how, which kind of cordage you can use or how big the notch is or how you can make a fire in general. So survival is very much about the details and if you get the details wrong, you will fail in surviving, you will die out there. So if you're interested in learning more detailed survival skills, then make sure that you check out his online course as well. Okay guys, so this is it for today. I really want to thank you for watching. And if you want to see more knife reviews, then please subscribe to my channel. I think I'm going to start with the knife reviews again. Actually, I had to make a pause with the knife reviews because YouTube didn't like them so much. So yeah, but I think now it's okay again. And I'm planning to make at least one knife review per month where I just test out different knives. And yeah, I really like knives. There are many knives on this planet. Um, I also have created my own knife, which I think is the perfect knife for me. But there are so many knives out there and most of which are great. Um, some of which are perfect. It's not easy to find a perfect knife, of course. But I really like knives and I have a true passion for them. And this is the reason why I want to start 
with the knife reviews again on my channel. Yeah, so if you want to see that, make sure that you are subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.